You are listening to the Keep the Weight Off podcast with Dr. Angela, episode number 30. Welcome to the Keep the Weight Off podcast, where we bust all the dieting myths and discover not just how to lose weight, but more importantly, how to keep it off. We go way beyond the food, and we use science and psychology to give you strategies that work. And now your host, Dr. Angela Zekman. So, hey, everyone, and hey, Marshall, how are you doing today? Good. Hi, everybody. Yay. Um, so, this is going to be a special podcast because I got a request in Sugar and Flower Busters Society recently to do a podcast on cholesterol. So, I'm fulfilling on that promise today. So, I'm super excited. By the way, if you're not already a member of Sugar and Flower Buster Society, I'd like to invite you to join us there. This is my Facebook group where we, um, I am Marshall, and all of our members are really going to support you in your journey to lasting health. And what I want you to know is that um, when you decide to start eating wholesome, healthy food, in this food environment that we're in, you could sometimes feel like you're salmon swimming upstream, like you're a lone ranger. And uh, if you can have a group of people that you can go to for support, you'll be much more successful at this so that you don't feel like you're the only person in the whole world that is trying to get free of all of these sort of addictive foods that are out there. So that's what we do. We support each other. Um, there's uh, lots of recipes in there, just lots of lots of great help and support. So if you're not already a member of Sugar and Flower Buster Society, be sure to join us and we will leave a link um, in the show notes for the podcast. You can find that at journeybeyondweightloss.com podcast. All right, so let's talk about cholesterol. Now, what I want all of our listeners to know, my goal is to inform you. I'm not going to offer you any specific medical advice. So if you have any questions about your particular cholesterol levels, please discuss this with your own doctor. Um, so I'm just going to give you a lot of background information so that you will know what cholesterol is and what types of things that we should be looking at. Okay, so let's talk about cholesterol. Um I want to preface this talk by letting you know that I did a lot of research on this topic in preparation for this podcast, hours and hours. Um, there's a whole field of study called lipidology, and we're learning more about cholesterol metabolism all the time, so I wanted to get myself really up to date. There are scientists who have been researching cholesterol for decades now, so we've really learned a lot. And some of this, what I'm going to teach you is stuff that we've just learned in the last couple of years, actually. And, you know, as it always is, whenever you learn something, the more you know, the more you realize you don't know. So sometimes research just generates more and more questions. So I, I just want you all to understand that, that this is an evolving field of study. Marshall. Did you know that when people lose weight, their cholesterol levels will often go up? Have you ever I seen actually, that? Before? No, I actually did not know that. I see it pretty regularly and I never get freaked out about it. Sometimes people will say, oh my God, you know, now I'm eating all, I'm eating a lot more fat. I'm not eating all this low fat, high sugar stuff anymore. And my cholesterol has gone up. I must be doing something wrong. And I want you to know that this is to be expected. It's normal and there's no reason to freak out. So I'm going to explain all of that. But before I do that, I've got to give you the background information so that you understand it. The first thing that I want you to know is exactly what cholesterol is. Most people have heard that elevated cholesterol levels put you at risk for cardiovascular disease, which is actually the number one killer of Americans. Well, what exactly is cardiovascular disease? It's more than just heart attacks. A lot of us think of cardiovascular disease as heart attacks. But what cardiovascular disease is, it's any disease of the blood vessels. So for example, when the blood vessels that supply the heart get blocked, that causes the heart attack. When the blood vessels that supply the brain get blocked, 
that causes a stroke. Aortic aneurysm is another manifestation of cardiovascular disease. And this is a weakening of the aorta. The aorta is the major artery that comes from the heart. So what I want everyone to understand is that the blood vessel system is actually a complete system involving the whole body. So if there's disease in one part of it, there's likely disease in all of it. And so that's why if a patient has a stroke, for example, they're going to check your heart and they're going to check your aorta and they're going to look for disease in other places as well. Okay. So that's what cardiovascular disease is sort of in a simplified nutshell. Now, what is cholesterol and how does it cause blockages in the arteries? Cholesterol is actually present in all cell membranes, and it's an important component in creating the structure of cells and cell membranes. Cholesterol is also used to make hormones, bile acid, vitamin D. So it's actually a really, really important molecule, and your body needs cholesterol, and it needs a lot of it. When you get your cholesterol levels checked, if you get the standard profile, which is what most doctors check automatically, you're going to get a number for total cholesterol. This is the cholesterol that is floating in your bloodstream. We're not looking at all the other places where cholesterol is. So just remember that. Um, the total cholesterol is broken down into various subtypes. There's HDL cholesterol, which is theoretically the good stuff. HDL, good cholesterol. Although more current research is showing that it's not as important as we once thought it was. And I'll talk about that more later. Uh, the other types of cholesterol that we measure in the standard profile is uh, LDL cholesterol and VLDL cholesterol. These ones are generally thought of as bad stuff. And however, it's not always bad. And I'm going to explain that as well. The last number we get is triglycerides, which are fats. They're not really cholesterol. And triglycerides are made from glucose or blood sugar. So if your diet is high in sugar or flour or both, you'll oftentimes have high triglycerides and alcohol can also raise triglycerides. Okay, so that's what the standard profile is. Does all of that make sense, Marshall? Too yeah, I do. I do have one question. So if somebody has um, like a fatty liver disease or mm -hmm. like, is that, is that high triglycerides? Yeah, oftentimes yeah. that is triglyceride buildup in the liver. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. All right. So when it comes to these different types of cholesterol, what I want you to understand is that these aren't actually cholesterol particles. Okay. They're actually what we're measuring are transport proteins. So cholesterol doesn't dissolve well in, in water and blood plasma is mostly water. So in order for the cholesterol to be transported around to the different cells in the body, it has to be carried on proteins that will dissolve in water. So the LDL cholesterol that we measure in the standard cholesterol profile is actually the vehicle that carries the cholesterol around. The cholesterol gets made in the liver, most of it. It gets attached to the LDL cholesterol. And then it travels through the bloodstream and around to the various cells that need it. Remember, your cells need cholesterol to make cell membranes and hormones and vitamin D and bile acids. So it's a really, really important molecule. Now, the other thing to understand about cholesterol is that the cholesterol in your bloodstream is only a very small fraction of the cholesterol that's in the body. And I mentioned that already, but I'm pointing it out again here. Okay, so the LDL and the VLDL cholesterol pro transport proteins are carrying cholesterol around and delivering it to cells. When there's excess, the HDL, that's theoretically the good stuff, transports it back to the liver. In the past, it was felt that it's all about the balance between 
the LDL and the HDL numbers. It was felt that you can have a lot of LDL, but if your HDL numbers were high, you were felt to be at lower risk. And that if you could raise HDL levels, you would be at lower risk. However, current research doesn't really bear that out. Raising HDL doesn't necessarily lower risk. So the lipidologists are not as focused on that strategy anymore. Just FYI. Okay, so how does cardiovascular disease develop? The first thing that happens in the development of cardiovascular disease is an injury to the artery wall. Okay, the artery wall is covered by uh, a layer of, um, it's, it's covering is called the endothelium. So damage to that artery wall is called endothelial damage. So the biggest risk factors for endothelial damage are smoking and high blood pressure, which is why we're always trying to get people to quit smoking and why we're always trying to treat high blood pressure. Um, high blood sugars also damage the blood vessel endothelium, so that's why it's so important to manage your blood sugars if you have diabetes. Diabetes can put you at high risk for cardiovascular disease. Now, when the endothelium is damaged, it gets leaky, and the cholesterol can build up in the wall and cause what's called a plaque to form. So plaque is just a buildup of cholesterol. Eventually, the plaque ruptures and a blood clot forms, and this is what causes the blockages that causes the heart attacks and the strokes. So I want to say here, I'm simplifying this a lot, but this is essentially what's going on. Now, here's what I want you to understand. In the setting of a damaged blood vessel wall, if you have high levels of LDL particles that are in the bloodstream for extended periods of time, they can get stuck in the blood vessel wall and create plaques. But when we do our standard tests, we're not measuring the LDL particles, we're measuring the transport proteins, okay? So the elevated LDL cholesterol transport proteins are not what's causing the cardiovascular disease, it's the LDL particles that increase your risk of heart disease. So the LDL particles are carried on the LDL cholesterol transport protein, but some people have lots of these particles floating around freely, getting up into the blood vessel walls and causing blockages. So it's possible to have very normal cholesterol levels and actually be at high risk of cardiovascular disease. So, something to understand there. Science is also coming to the understanding that it's not just how high the LDL particle concentration goes, but it's about how long these LDL particles are in the bloodstream. The quicker they get flushed out by the liver, the less likelihood they have of getting stuck in the artery wall and causing a plaque. So really, to truly assess your risk for cardiovascular disease, you need an advanced cholesterol profile, a more in-depth test. And this is called the NMR profile. Quest Labs calls it the Cardio IQ. Another name for it is a VAP test. There may be others, but those are the ones that I'm familiar with. So I call the standard cholesterol test, the one that you get at your doctor's office, um, I call it the kindergarten test. I would never make any decision about cardiovascular risk based on that standard test. You really need to get the advanced test or what I call the college cholesterol test, either the NMR or the VAP or the cardio IQ, so that you can find out what your LDL particle number is. This is a really important number. Normal is less than 1,000. There are two other numbers that are also extremely important. One of them is the ApoB100. This is a protein that wraps around the LDL particle, and when this number is high, you're at high risk. And the other number is called LP little a. This one is more genetically determined. So if you've got a whole bunch of family members where lots of people have had heart attacks at young ages, often there are high levels of this LP little a. And some experts these days uh, are recommending that everyone gets screened at least once 
with an advanced test to find out what their LP little a number looks like, looks like so that they'll know if they're at higher risk genetically. Now, here's what I want you to understand about what can happen in the weight loss process. Before I do that, does and does all of this make sense, Marshall? Or do you have any? Yeah, questions? this is really fascinating. So I'm yeah. just, I'm just it's, soaking it's a it all lot, in. It's a lot of science. It really is, and it is. Um, it's a lot of complicated stuff. But um, you know, the most important thing to understand is that you really cannot assess risk looking at the standard profile. That you really need some of these more advanced numbers. But here's what can happen when you lose weight inside of fat cells. The triglyceride fats are stored with the LDL transport proteins. So when you lose weight, that whole complex comes out of the fat cell. The fats get burned for energy, but the LDL cholesterol transport protein can hang around for a little while. And what's interesting is that almost always the size of that transport protein changes from the small, dense, dangerous type to a larger protein that can handle more LDL particles, thus actually lowering cardiovascular risk. What I want everyone to understand is that when you're in the weight loss process, when you stop eating all that processed junk food and you're eating whole foods and you're nourishing your body with good proteins, lots of vegetables, healthy fats, this can be nothing but good for your body. Don't worry if your LDL cholesterol goes up for a little while. Get an advanced test, get the NMR or the VAP or the cardio IQ, and find out what your real risk is. It's interesting because, you know, I'm one of those people who, if you look at my standard cholesterol profile, everything looks great. Like my LDL is low, my HDL is high, my total cholesterol is fine, my triglycerides are nice and low, everything looks great. But my mother's standard cholesterol profile looked great too. And yet she ended up with a triple bypass when she was 58 years old, which is really young. And she's a skinny little thing. Like she hardly weighs 100 pounds. So she's not someone that you would ever expect to have heart disease. And my father had heart disease too and a stroke. So I was concerned. I'm like, I don't care how good this this kindergarten profile looks, I need to look at the advanced testing. And so I did. And I found that my LDL particle number was high. My LDL cholesterol was the small, dense cholesterol that's dangerous. Um, so I made some changes in my nutrition. I was already eating pretty well, but I got a little bit more deliberate about my nutrition. I got even more careful with my carbs. I started a meditation practice so that I could reduce my cortisol levels, uh, which reduces insulin levels. And you know what? That was all it took for me. So I got my LDL particle number down. I changed the shape of my LDL um, cholesterol. Uh, so I really reduced my risk that way. Now, other people need more aggressive intervention to get that LDL particle number down. And some people do need to take a statin medication. So my advice to anyone listening to this podcast would be, don't freak out if your cholesterol levels go up while you're losing weight. And the other recommendation is, especially if you have a family history of heart attack, stroke, aortic aneurysm, or if you have any insulin resistance or diabetes, consider getting the advanced testing done. But wait until you've lost weight and you're not eating crap food very often. Because then you can get a clearer sense of any genetic risk. The standard American diet causes cardiovascular disease, period. It just does. If you eat fast food and food that comes in packages and boxes, if you drink sugar-sweetened beverages, you're at risk, period. So I want you to think of this stuff in the same way you think about cigarettes. It's just a lot of high-risk for a miserable life and an early death, and it's really just not worth it. <laughs> so, <laughs> no. do you have any any questions about this, Marshall? No, it just makes me really mad at the food industry because I yeah. know that it's so hard to 
sift through all the garbage because it's yeah. just all around us. And I, and I yeah. just understand the struggle of trying mm-hmm. to make good choices because, you know, it's, they're few and far between unless you're totally sustainable, you know, growing your own vegetables and, yeah, you know, raising, raising your own food. But, yeah. Um, yeah. Well, you can, you can get high quality food at the grocery store, but it just takes, it takes you effort. You can, but I mean, the amount of good things at the grocery store compared to the amount of crap that's at the grocery store. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. Pretty, pretty high you have to just kind of turn a blind eye to all that process right. stuff. So, right. Okay. So here are the main points that I want everybody to understand about cholesterol. First of all, if your LDL cholesterol goes up while you're losing weight, do not be concerned. Second, talk to your doctor, but I would not start a statin medication based on the information you get from a standard cholesterol test. You really need an advanced test to find out what your real risk is. Third thing, the most important metrics based on current science that indicate high risk include LDL particle number, which is different than LDL cholesterol, ApoB100, LDL size, and LP little a. Elevated LP little a is felt to be genetic, and many experts are recommending that everyone be screened, especially when the family history shows a lot of early cardiovascular disease. And then the last thing to know is that processed food and sugary beverages are very dangerous for your heart and cardiovascular system. Begin to think about this stuff in the same way you think about cigarettes. And if you can make some significant changes in the way you feed your body, you can oftentimes greatly reduce your risk for cardiovascular disease without taking cholesterol-lowering medications. So I hope that answers the question that our Sugar and Flour Busters Society member wanted to know about cholesterol. If it doesn't and you have more questions, please let me know. Um, You can put a comment, uh, put comments um, to this podcast. Let me know what you think. And let me know if you have any other questions about that. There's a lot to know. And again, I kind of simplified everything just so that it would be more understandable. Okay. Any other questions? questions or comments? I do have one. I do have one final question. So, um, you know, like when, when patients come in or, I mean, or even myself, um, Mm -hmm. when, you know, you come in in a certain condition and, you know, you have the, you know, you're eating a certain way or if you're smoking or drinking or whatever, when Mm -hmm. you start out and you quit doing all that, does your cholesterol or, you know, your risk for cardiovascular disease go down? down does it go back to normal like after you quit smoking or is like the damage done once once you've done that oh your risk reduces greatly okay it's never it's never the same as if you had never been exposed to all of that stuff but it's Mm -hmm. much much better much less risk for sure yeah all right yeah yep all right Awesome. Well, that's all for today, everybody. We will see you back next week with another podcast. And in the meantime, have a great week. Eat good, healthy stuff. And we'll see you next time. Take care. Bye-bye. Hey, if you really want to lose weight and keep it off for good, your next step is to sign up for Dr. Angela's free weight loss course, where you're going to learn everything you need to get started on your weight loss journey the right way. Just head over to journeybeyondweightloss.com slash free course to sign up. Also, it would be awesome if you could take a few moments and write a review on iTunes. Thanks, and we'll see you in Journey Beyond Weight Loss.